Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson one about West Africa. And our essential question today will be, what were early societies in West Africa like? And for proper attribution, I'm going to give credit to Mr. Conwell for creating this PowerPoint. I've made some small modifications, but other than that, I very much appreciate his efforts, and I'm going to turn it into a YouTube lesson today. Your essential question, what were early societies in West Africa like? Prepare to transition. First of all, we're going to talk about the geographic regions of North and Central Africa. So your left side question will be, what were geography and trade like in Africa or West Africa? Your choice. First thing you need to know is the northern border of what we consider to be West Africa is the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert is big. How big is it, you may ask? It is as big as the entire lower 48 of the United States of America. It's big. In fact, I could probably show you on Google Earth how big it is. So if I feel like doing that, I will pause the video and show you in class. The Atlantic Ocean is the western boundary of West Africa and the southern boundary of West Africa. Africa takes a big curve along its coastline. Um, so both west and south of West Africa are the Atlantic Ocean. In fact, that's where the prime meridian crosses the equator is just off the coast of West Africa. There's a fun fact for you. Uh, the eastern edge of West Africa is made up of mountain ranges back. So that you just got a sneak peek of how big the Sahara Desert is. So these are the three borders of West Africa. And now I will transition to the next slide. So here is a graphic that shows you that basically what we call the lower 48 states of the United States of America could fit into the Sahara Desert. That is how big it is the largest desert on the face of the earth. It's about 3.5 million square miles, and it's about the size of the lower 48. So we're not including Alaska, we're not including Hawaii. We're just talking about the 48, what we call contiguous states, states that touch each other. The Sahara dry is, the Sahara desert is extremely dry, and it is not suitable for large settlements because there's hardly any food, and there's hardly any water. So if you are a human being, you need food and water, and the Sahara Desert is pretty much not the place for you. Can you think of a left side question for this slide? Uh, the next region we're gonna talk about is the Sahel, or the Sahel, depending on how you wanna pronounce it. It's kind of a tomato-tomato thing. Uh, the Sahel, which stands for semi-desert, is further to the south. And one thing you should also know is that this area is becoming more desert-like because of global climate change. Global climate change is causing the Sahara Desert to creep further and further south and is pushing the Sahel region further and further south. So this area has enough water for some grasslands, a few bushes, and a few trees. But other than that, it's still a pretty dry and unpleasant place. It is not a place that can support large human settlements or a lot of life. It's just kind of your boundary area on the southern end of the desert. Uh, this is also an area that has a lot of conflict in Africa, and a lot of that conflict is as a result of natural resources and water. Um, because of global climate change, those conflicts have increased over time. Can you think of a left side question? Next region we're going to talk about is called the savanna, which is an area of tall grasslands and some scattered trees. This area gets more water and has more vegetation than the Sahel and therefore has a larger population because it can actually support more people. And this is where a lot of wildlife safaris are. Um, the one thing about Africa is it is probably the most untamed continent on our planet. It is the continent that is most like the Earth used to be before human beings had such an impact upon it. 
So it has a very long rainy season, and because it has a long rainy season, this is a great place for farmland and the grazing of cattle. Uh, in fact, um, Africa is starting to become a breadbasket for uh, other parts of the world because the farmland there is so amazing and so good. Can you think up a left side question for this slide? Finally, we have forests. And there are two types of forests you should know about, and this is where a lot of people live. Um, one of those types of forests is called the woodland forest. It has many different kinds of trees. And if we're talking woodland forest, we're talking in this, these areas here in the lighter dark shade of green. The lighter dark shade of green. These are woodland forests. And then the other area we're going to talk about is the rainforest. And the rainforest is the really, really dark area here. Um, that is the thickest and lushest vegetation. Um, it dominates the southernmost region of West Africa. So in Liberia, the Ivory Coast, Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, Gabon, Congo, those are all areas that have rainforest. And also those are all areas that have enormous diversity of um, wildlife, diversity of plants, and because of the hot humid temperatures, um, they are also areas where many different diseases uh, can form because diseases tend to proliferate in very, very hot, humid climates. So you now have four different slides with four different potential left side questions, all describing geographic regions of West Africa. So at this point, it is appropriate for you to come up with a one sentence summary for each of the types of climates and geographic areas that we have described in this presentation today. And when you are done writing that summary, you should be prepared to share it with a table partner. And once you've shared it with a table partner, you might just be called upon to share it with the entire class. So please get started on your summary. And until further notice, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until lesson two on West Africa.